studio recording a five song EP called Carry the Wounded and uh, the title track Carry the Wounded talks about uh, how I think all of us have known someone at some point or maybe we've even been there ourselves uh, that have totally fallen away spiritually and just uh, basically said goodbye to their walk with the Lord and uh, this song is hopefully an encouragement to people not to give up a on their friends and sometimes the people that we think are the furthest from God and that there's no chance of any reconciliation with, uh, with their maker that sometimes they've had so many people just blame them and say man what a lousy Christian or look at, look at that person there's no hope for them and uh, sometimes they're, they're that, that close to returning to the Lord they just need some encouragement Hi, this is Victor Macias, and I'm here at Mixing Lab, and we're still in the process of recording our new EP called Carry the Wounded. And I just actually got finished with my last bass track, and uh, we're all pretty happy with the stuff that's coming out so far, so it's very cool. Um, people often ask me about my influences and uh, the kind of stuff that I've listened to over the years to uh, develop my style, or um, if I can even say style. Uh, just my, my technique or whatever. Um, growing up, I listened to a lot of uh, early 80s uh, British metal stuff, you know, your Iron Maiden, your uh, Judas Priest type stuff, and Saxon, stuff like that, and a lot of the uh, early 80s British punk also, Discharge and GBH. Um, and uh, a lot of the late 70s uh, progressive rock also, your King Crimson and ELP, I love both of those bands a whole lot, and there's some really cool bass stuff going on, a lot of distorted stuff. Um, Rush, obviously, uh, more progressive stuff uh, over the years and, and more recently. Um, but I've, I've just kind of used a lot of those influences to uh, kind of get different ideas for songs and um, Oftentimes a song will just call for a very basic line, uh, something that just kind of locks in with the drums and uh, um, carries the rhythm. And other times there's, there's chances to, uh, to fan out a little bit and do something a little more elaborate. But uh, every song, I think, is, is definitely different and needs to be approached in a different way so that you're not always playing 800 notes uh, per measure or uh, whatever. You know, just use whatever uh, the song calls for and uh, always try to enhance the whole picture as opposed to stepping out and making yourself uh, the, uh, the object of attention. Over the last seven years, Tourniquet's had some big changes, I think. Um, one of those changes has been personnel. We've had two members uh, leave the group and uh, we've had, I guess more importantly, two I think really important key uh, additions to the band. Aaron and Luke are both fantastic additions to Tourniquet and uh, over the last year and a half we've had a lot of fun uh, both in the studio and on the road with those guys and uh, I look forward to a, uh, a real fun 1995 playing out live. Uh, when I meet people after the shows and whatnot or just you know wherever on the street and whatnot if you know they know I'm in tourniquet I think the best part about it is hearing that the music really is having an impact and that we're not just spinning our wheels and kidding ourselves about what we're trying to do and it's, it's good to hear that uh, the efforts that we put forth on on, uh, on a record you know they're, that they're having the desired result I joined tourniquet in June of 94 this year and I had originally sent a tape in when they were looking for a singer, 
and I got in touch with Gary over the phone and um, although they were impressed with the demo tape, it wasn't exactly what they were looking for and they got Luke who's a far better singer anyways and from that's originally how I got in touch with the band and a year later they were looking for a guitarist and Gary called me up. They had just finished their last album, Vanishing Lessons, and they needed a replacement before they went out on tour. And so I drove down on a Thursday to audition and drove back home the next day and Gary had left a message to call him. And when I got back to him he said, you know, we want you down the next day. And so I drove back down and worked on the songs. The newer ones that I hadn't heard were probably the hardest, but between Gary, Ted, and Victor, they made it real easy learning the songs. And from there, we went out on the road. Silently vanishing, then reappearing, slipping away for a while. in the hearts of the most reckless, which cannot be touched without emotion, even with the utterly lost, to whom life and death are equally jests. There are matters of which no jest can be made.
going out on the road is a lot of fun. It's it, it's like you're a family and you, you get to share a lot of things together, not just playing, although that's probably the highlight of it, but you get to see the countryside, you get to meet a lot of different people, and uh, it was just really a lot of fun, sh you know, sharing, you know, first of all, the word and the gospel to people, but also just, just to meet different people from across the nation and even up in Canada, which the people are really nice. And it was just a lot of fun. As uh, many of you know who followed tourniquet from the early days, stop the bleeding, psychosurgery, etc. cetera, um, they probably know that I'm the drummer, A, and that uh, B, I do quite a bit of the songwriting. And I'm very thankful for uh, whatever gifts the Lord has given me in that area. And uh, there's nothing like the thought that people enjoy our music so much that they check out the lyrics because that's, that's what it's all about. If they're not into the music, the chances that the lyrics are really going to speak to them are, are not very good. And uh, so we're really, really thankful that uh, people have been into the music. And it's caused a lot of people all over the world to uh, get into the Word of God. We really uh, want people to know that uh, there is no substitute for spending time in the Word every day. Uh, when we're on the road, we, uh, you know, as well as playing shows, we, we like to take time out and do fun stuff. And uh, this one particular time, we were staying with some friends of Ted's in uh, the Chicago area. And uh, they taught us how to use various household items to make a combustible device out of a Pepsi bottle. And uh, we set it off in front of their house and just we freaked out the entire neighborhood. It was, it was a loud. I, I didn't realize that a, a, a two liter bottle could make so much noise. And that, that was, I would have to say that's my favorite road story. That was a blast. Oh, Rick, you better hurry up. Oh, oh, that oh, one's gonna yeah. go. <laughs> Look at Perry. Okay. Now watch how big they get. Well, you gotta zoom hard. in on it. Okay, the Someone's motor gotta be car the motor in trouble. Oh, the motor home. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and right after, clean up crew no, It won't go that far, will it, today? Oh, a car's coming. Where? Where's that alarm more? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, you as soon as it, it starts going like right this. In on, on, well, I suppose the little one first. Yeah, as soon as it starts going over, then you know that it's going to go. Okay, the big one. Check it out. The big one. Oh, oh, oh. A&W. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the little one? Nothing. Oh, oh here it goes, here it goes. Oh, how big? <laughs> All right, oh my gosh! Our neighbors. <laughs> that little one was louder! Yeah. All right, guys, we got a pick up here. Okay. That, that was so oh, trash. That was so trash. <laughs> I would say, drumming influence-wise, number one would definitely be Gilligan. And I'm also heavily influenced by the incredible drumming of Bobby Brady.
is it? Uh, I need one more small cable now. Okay. Geez, no standby? No way, that thing? <laughs> and we need to stand by the tubes. Yeah, you think it's got tubes. <laughs> uh, one more short cable. Uh, if you don't have one, there'll be one in the gig bag. Okay, this is the shortest I That'll do. I just need to get from out of here into the gorilla here. Thank you. The secret of Tourniquet's humongous guitar sound. This and our great producer, Jim Faraki, the Israeli monster. There's one. There's another one. out my guitar Abernathy Vanishing Lessons model Abernathy has been a very very cool guitar company for the last eight years I've been looking for a guitar company that that, uh, that would build the kind of guitars that I've been looking for and honestly these guys have come through for me and uh, I could not be happier with these guys and uh, if you're interested in in a guitar that plays really cool and is real versatile musically then this is definitely the uh, company for you. And, uh, that's my commercial segment of the documentary. The way I write songs is uh, I usually come up with a, a riff first, a guitar riff, and 90% of the time I come up with a riff without actually playing the guitar. Um, I've come up with riffs while walking through the jungle in uh, the Amazon River Basin in Brazil. I've come up with riffs and lyrics in uh, the rainforest in Taiwan. Um, I've been in, in Korea and China and uh, the, the mountains in, in Northern California, just all, all different places. And uh, sometimes I'll hear a sound in, in nature that reminds me of some, I get a thought from that. I think a lot of people think that songwriting just comes from sitting down and, and plastering away at the guitar or of uh, sitting down with a pen and paper and saying, uh, okay, now what should I write about? And it's funny, it just kind of, uh, it just kind of happens. And uh, some songs take a half an hour to write and some you struggle with for days and days and you know there's some missing part but you just can't, can't find it. And uh, a lot of the songs that I've written have, have come both ways like that. One of the great things about being involved with Tourniquet over the years has been the fact that we've received a lot of mail uh, from third world countries, a lot of Latin uh, and South American countries. And being bilingual, I've been able to correspond with a lot of those kids through the mail. Um, one time I actually called a kid in Mexico and uh, I was on the phone with him and his friend for quite a while. And I didn't realize it at the time, but it turned into about a $75 phone bill which was cool because um, they were able to encourage me um, in a lot of ways and, and I them also and it was great to see that um, that our music is, is making an impact in, in the youth in, in these Spanish speaking countries and I think that uh, oftentimes countries like that being less uh, affluent or less fortunate than we are here in the United States they, they seem to need uh, the gospel a lot more and I think it's great that that bands like us and bands like Bride and and all the other ministries um, are, are making their music be heard in, uh, in countries outside of the United States I think that's a really important thing as far as uh, music ministry goes being in tourniquet is you know I any band that I've ever been in it wasn't for the money it wasn't for the fame it wasn't for the girls or the drugs or any of that and being in Tourniquet was like, I'd never been in a Christian band. And so it, it kind of, it, it put the icing on the cake of where I wanted to be as far as performing. The Christian music scene right now is kind of at a strange crossroads. 
and I'm pretty honored right now just to have the grace from God to be involved with ministry at all. Um, there has been, as far as I can tell, some incredible weeding out, if you will, of uh, some Christian bands and, and ministries and some sad stories as well. <clears throat> a couple bands, a couple of bands have gone down uh, much to my despair, bands that I really respected and, uh, and I subsequently miss. Um, I think Tourniquet now has even a stronger commitment to God and to Christian music more than ever. And uh, it's pretty exciting to be involved with Christian music. The whole music scene in general right now is at a kind of a strange crossroads. There's an incredible melting pot of styles going on right now. And I think for Tourniquet, I think whoever has gotten into Tourniquet in the past got into us because perhaps we share the same kind of music influences, but we've never been a band to kind of stand still and just to do one thing. And I don't think we'd ever go so far off the edge that we somehow alienated people that have been into Tourniquet. Hi, my name is Nick Henderson, and I did uh, filming with these guys, and I am giving them my right to use the footage if they want to. It's good enough. And what's the band's name? Um, Tourniquet. Tourniquet, yeah, that's what, what's right. What's today's date? I don't know. No. Uh, my name is Patrick Manley, and I give permission to be using the video. And it's Tourniquet? Tourniquet for uh, five. Say it, frontline music group. Frontline music group. My name is Jose Serta. I give Tourniquet my rights to have my footage in the video. <laughs> 